bottom panel, one end, and the other end. As you can see, I've just put um, a piece of wire in here, which pulled the butt joint together, and one that end. And I haven't taken the tape right to the very end, because there's going to be another panel butted on to the side here. Okay, that would be the first chime going on. And eventually, there's going to be another piece of tape running along this seam, so it's going to overlap that slightly anyway. Okay, uh, that's the first chime there. And what I've done with this one, I've just screwed it down to the bench to keep it all secure, and then taped it right the way across. Once this is cured, it's gone off, I will then turn these panels over and do exactly the same on the reverse. Okay, um, I use two different size tapes. This one's 50mm wide, this one's 75 The 75 I use on the outside of the build, the 50 I use on the inside. Um, you may be able to make out there's a slight texture to this tape it's woven. Just get a piece. It's like a woven tape. But when you actually wet this out, the outer edge it, it um, protrudes if you like. It swells a tiny bit. So when it comes to once it's all gone off and the actual canoe is all com you know, all stitched together, all complete. You've only got to feather this in by sanding it lightly. Try not to sand the whole lot in. It's just this edge, you know, I don't know, around a quarter of an inch, and you'll just feather that in, you'll get that out to smooth it out a little bit. And you do that on all the panels. So they're my first two bits. And once this is complete, and the reverse side of these two have done, the second chine, of this first bottom chime, which goes here, I will then do the other. Due to the space, I can't do the whole lot in one go, which I would like to do. I don't like doing it on the floor because it's uneven. And but if you have got a nice, smooth garage floor, um, you can put it down on a piece of polythene and lay all your panels on top and do it all in one go, all one side. Let it cure, then turn it over. And do the other side and with this is like a cool mix so I'm basically using um, so an egg cup full of resin to about a teaspoon of catalyst harder so I really want this to soak in and let it take its time this part does take a little bit of time you're waiting around for it to cure but, um, it's well worth the wait it keeps it nice and strong if you can get someone to help you, especially with these longer panels, is to actually turn it over because it's a bit vulnerable when it's only taped to one side, you know. So you've got to be a little bit careful with it because you don't want it snapping. Uh, the bottom, because of the, the width, it's a bit easier to handle. Um, once you've done those, you can just lean them up against, I'll be leaning them up against this wall and going through the rest of the panels until they're all complete. So that'll be my next stage, just to get this all done. And then I'll start drilling the holes for the wire. This is like garden, I get this stuff from the uh, garden center. They come in, uh, I'll show you. Okay, they come in this sort of length, and I normally cut these in half, and that will do two stitches. And on here, so four inches from there, roughly, I drill another small pilot hole. I'm using roughly a three mil, 3.5 mil drill bit. Um, so every four inches, go along, and the butt side of the next chine that's butting up to this. I have identical measurements, so they all tally up as we go along. So you can start pulling the whole thing in. Once you get to around about here, um, I say what, two foot from the centre seam, it actually starts strengthening right up. And I show all that process as I go along. 
I'll try and keep it as clear as possible. Um, yeah, this is the actual uh, paint that I use for the inside. As you can see, it's mil military vehicle matte paint, NATO green. Um, and as you can see, it looks like touch dry in an hour and so. But uh, I probably did the first coat. I do about two coats. Did the first coat. I won't bother doing the second one until the following day. But, um, yeah, all that will be done basically once the seat supports are fitted and all the rest of it. Then I will uh, paint that all off. So uh, there she goes, and there's my other panels waiting patiently. Yeah, I'm very lucky that I have access to this little workshop. As you can see, I've got a table saw, uh, paint thicknesser. Few bits and bobs, it's the old mortise machine. So uh, yeah, it's quite small, but the band saw. It's quite a nice place, and uh, I'll show you a little video of the camp later, because um, you can see right at the back, beyond the chickens, there's a wood there. So I'm actually down here for a few days, and I'm camping in the wood. So. Uh, so I can get up nice and early, crack on. So hopefully by the end of the week, this should be uh, pretty much finished. Also, if you have any um, leftover resin from doing this taping, because you've gone a little bit over the top, don't waste it. Um, just start resin washing the actual panels. So uh, it's a nice thin coat going on there. And like I say, this is a cold mix because uh, the first mix I do on this is cold because I want it to actually soak in to the uh, timber as much as possible. It's done a little bit at that end as well. Try not to go too far, like say on the support. Obviously if you're doing this on the floor, you don't want to be putting it on there because by the time you turn it over, you're going to have a load of gunk stuck to this if it hasn't cured. So as soon as you start painting the resin on wide areas, it takes a little bit longer for it to actually cure. But, um, I did this about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes ago, this one, and it's pretty much nearly touch dry as soon as it is touch dry completely I'll, I'll turn it over but, uh, yeah, it's a bit tacky so, anyway I'll catch you soon okay uh, continuing on from um I was showing you how to uh, join the panels uh, before sewing. Um, I completed that task, so they're all complete. And then it's the actual initial pulling the panels together, sewing them all up, put them in the right orders. Um, with most plans, there's a step-by-step -step guide for this. Um, I will have. Um, text on my blog um, taking you through the stages as well but, um, as you can see at the moment it's look it may not <laughs> it's still it does resemble a canoe but still a lot to do on the um, the bottom panel you can quite clearly see the, uh, the cross section there where it's joined in the middle and I've spot taped it along the bottom seam so weather wires are, I haven't taped it. Reason being, I like to remove the wires afterwards completely. And um, this will be overlaid with wider tape. This is 50 mil tape that I've used on this section. And it's basically just pulling it all in together. Um, using the bevel, if I show you what that is. Using one of these. That will give me the angle where the bottom chine goes, where I like it to be, on both sides. And um, you can support that just by using a piece of timber. Once that's supported where you want it, then you, you start lining your, your tape up and resining it. I mean, already it's actually starting to get a bit more rigid. I mean, as soon as you start to tighten, it does. But, um, as you can see in the workshop, 
I'm sort of pushing it for space. But it's still manageable, it's still workable. This is a case of climbing underneath. But, um, if the weather was a lot better, I would be doing this outside. Um, like I said before, the resin doesn't like water. It will just cancel the curing on that. So next stage is to position the second chine and taping this this join here all the way along right up as far as I can go before I start manipulating the actual bow and stern to the shape that I want it. As you can see it looks quite gappy at the moment until I start pulling it all in tighten it right up because these are they're kind of don't tighten everything up completely um, apart from the butt joints you know at the, the seams where they actually join on so it gives you that little bit of that little bit of room to play about and start pulling it in and out to how you like it and to keep the shape and once you've done that second chine well each time you've done the taping like the bottom taping you go from end to end of the the canoe and you look down the center line the imaginary center line if you like you can always draw one on but um, like I say I've been doing it a while so I'll just look down and eye it up to make sure, sure it's it's not banana shaped if you like it's centered so, um, so I'm going to crack on with that now I'm going to do the second spot taping Normally, as a rule, I would probably drill every four inches and have a wire. I've used cable ties on this to speed things up a little bit. Um, you can use cable ties. Um, I do prefer to use the wire because when you're twisting it, it really does pull it up really tight. Sometimes, it depends on the, the cable ties that you have. If they're not very good quality ones, you won't be able to nip it up as tight as you like. But um, this is how she's looking at the moment. So I'm going to crack on with the taping. And uh, once all the chines are taped, I'll put the the uh, the centre twart in temporarily, and that's just to push. Because if you look inside at the moment, these are they're wanting to go in, but it'll push these out to where they're supposed to be. So, um, right, I'm going to get on with that, and I'll see you in a little while. Okay, so what I've done now is, as far as I want to go with the spot taping, I've laid it all out dry, okay, there's no resin on there, I've just cut them to the rough lengths that I want, so I've got plenty of space in between the ties, because I don't want to get any resin on those ties, I just want to be able to come out, just snip them, pull them straight out, they come out straight away, no problem. Um, so that's the idea of leaving that space in. Um, with the actual panelling, what I've done is basically, if I get, um, all right, I'll just try and, try and explain it the best I can. Um, your ply's got a square edge, yeah? If I, okay, it's, it's square edged. As these panels come down, if you see this one at the moment, okay, it's overlapping. That's not how you want it. So. What I've been doing, I've been pushing and manipulating that panel. I want this outer edge of the panel, which is in front of this panel. I want it, the inner edge of this panel, sitting on the inner edge of this, if you like. So if you look further along, you can kind of see. So it, it does come apart. There is a gap all the way along. On the inside, I want it pinching. Um, reason for this is you get a, a nice tight finish on the inside and once all this tape's gone off and I've done all the chines with the spot taping and I've put the temporary taut in to give it that extra bit of stability I can then turn the whole boat over remove all ties wires or cable ties whatever you choose to use and then you start planing up the outer edges to um, just to get a different kind of, you know, a smoother shape, if you like. And you will get some slightly overhanging, and all that. It's just, 
it's not unavoidable but it doesn't do any harm you know a light bit of sanding a little bit of planing and it's fine and uh, so that's how I've that's all I've done to these panels before I've just put the dry tape up um, and always cut your tape before you do before you mix any resin whatsoever because once the resin goes beyond a certain point it turns into like gloop and it's a horrible finish and you can't really work with it um, the other tip that I will say is I'm wearing like um, latexy type gloves disposable gloves um, what I'll do is I'll have two pairs on so I have two gloves on each hand um, which is a good tip the idea is once you start because you actually you know have to manipulate the tape sometimes if you end up getting a bubble in it you've got to peel it back re-wet it back down so your hands are going to start getting really sticky when you're touching more dry tape it, it can become a bit of a nightmare so you know put two or three pairs of gloves on at the same time so basically you're just stripping the top layer of glove chucking them away you know just dump them on the floor and then crack on with the work you've got dry gloves again um, and for this process I'm just using a two inch brush this came from um, a place what supplies the resin in Zion which is quite cool um, they're very cheap but those bristles don't fall out so uh, right I'll crack on Hi. Right. right okay um, it's all been spot taped all the joins all the seams have been spot taped on the inside I haven't done the uh, bow and stern as yet um, what I've done I've put in temporarily I've put in the seat supports as you can see the screws are still protruding they're only in there temporarily as I have to shape some of those and uh, these are two of the supports there'll be a centre support and then it's covered again with ply um, this will be the centre twart um, but obviously not at that height um, it will be a, a lot lower as I've got to um, attach the gunnels and so on so the torque will be below the gunnels itself um, it's just a temporary measure to keep the shape same as at the front I've done the same be another strut in the middle as a support but the only reason the reason I've done this is because I need to turn the boat over and even though the tape the spot taping inside has made it more rigid I can now lift the whole canoe there we go yeah and it's keeping its shape and I haven't got to worry about it you know stressing any of the joints out as yet Yep, as you can see, it's it's kept its centres, which I'm very pleased about. So the next job before I do anything, also the way that I've set the seat in here, the front, this will be the, the bow, the bow end of the canoe. This seat is actually set back um, in a different position. Most of the plans will um, give you the exact measurements. But I always have the seats offset. Um, reason being, it's a 16 foot boat. If I solo it, normally when you tandem, you'll be sat here, legs forward, okay? And someone else would be sat here, legs forward. They have more leg room. They need that extra leg room because the bulkhead gets fitted. Whereas at the back, at the stern, um, the bulkhead will come roughly here if you have a small space behind you but also when you ta when you're soloing this size craft um, it's quite nice sitting on the front seat if you like but facing which would be your um, the stern if you were tandeming um, it's just to counterbalance the weights within the boat you see you can kneel here bum leant against the seat or sat on the seat and then your kit and so on on the side so uh, that's the stage I'm at at the moment so already it's very sturdy and quite rigid 
Um, at the moment, at this stage, yeah, the sides you'll be able to manipulate them, and they're still quite loose if you like. But once the actual gunnels go on, this um, tightens all of this up. This all becomes quite um, rigid. But I need to um, get these in position so I can quite easily turn the boat over. I've got worry no worries about stressing out any of the taping that I've done, any of the seams and so on. And then it's a case of removing all the ties and wire, whatever you choose to use. And then start cleaning up all of the outside edge and the bow and the stern. Because it doesn't always tally up at the bow and stern. Um, you've only got to be slightly out when the panels will be out. And I mean, at this stage, you can manipulate the actual shape that you want. So, yeah, you can make it, you can quite, you know, you can personalize it so it's not a complete exact shape all the way down, you know. So, um, yeah, but this is the shape that I like. And uh, as you can see, getting there <laughs> so I'm probably going to call it a day today uh, get back to camp have something to eat get cleaned up and then uh, crack on again tomorrow and um, I hopefully tomorrow all the ties have been removed and the outside will be taped filled and taped any sort of slight gaps that I've got I will be filling it and um, what I use for filling is I use the resin mix and I have a really fine ash sawdust. It's almost like a powder. I call it like a flour. I mix it um, within the resin into a paste. Fill in any gaps that I don't want and then lay the tape over the top. Let that set for a little bit. It doesn't have to go completely off. And then lay your tape straight over the top and it will be fine. So there she goes at the moment. Hopefully tomorrow, if the weather is a little bit better, I will actually try and do some of that outside so I can actually stand back a bit further. So, uh, yeah. Okay, all the dimensions of all these come with most of the plans. There's no point in me actually giving you any dimensions on this boat because um, it's... A manipulation of a lot of other plans and a few of my own ideas and each build I normally do change something or other you know it depends on the timbers that I've been you know I've selected um, I mean if you look at this piece of ash here I mean it's really really nice so this torque will be upright and further down it won't be flat like this it's just at, at the moment but I've got a lovely some lovely grain there so I'll probably draw something on jigsaw it out and then machine you know sand it all down get it all nice and smooth but I probably have some sort of I don't know with the center ports and most canoes you know they used to be you know very um, it's almost like a semicircle sort of part here and that was actually to sit behind your neck when you're portaging it but some people really do deco you know they don't use that anymore and that sort of method of carrying them anymore and then you can really decorate it you can carve it you can do whatever you like with it kind of like a little signature of, of its own you know so there we go so far and uh, i will be taking more photos so there should be some still shots a bit closer up okay cheers